Hello, welcome to this CAD Image PLA webinar where we're looking at the new tools in Draft in Solid Edge ST7. Agenda for the session is to go through some of the new tools, enhancements to some of the existing tools, and some of the user settings and options pages surrounding the new tools and the enhancements. The, um, the key areas, I guess, for, for draft uh, are looking at views, uh, dimensions, uh, and uh, annotation tools, as you might expect. So let's pop across into Solid Edge so, and see what they've done uh, in ST7. <coughs> uh, no major changes really uh, to the way the interface uh, looks, but uh, some nice tools for, for view creation. So let's kick off the Drawing View Wizard. And we'll drill down into uh, into one of the assemblies here and pick up one of the uh, the models that we want to uh, create a drawing of. Actually, we'll just browse off because I think actually the model here is on one in one of the folders. There it is. So I'm going to create a drawing of this uh, this drive cover. Uh, nothing new really so far. The uh, you can use the scroll wheel to change the scale of the view. Um, once I'm happy with that, we can click and place it. But what is new is what we can see now is that any further views that you create are now uh, displayed with a with a view preview. At least they are out of the box. Um, that I think is in incredibly useful uh, for creating uh, drawing views. The impact uh, that you may find is if you're creating drawings of large assemblies, then it's going to have an impact on performance because it's looking at the parts and working out what's a visible line, what's a hidden line, what's a tangent line as you go. So, that, so that's the trade-off really is A, I can create a drawing view right the first time because I can get the orientation right, uh, but B, say if, if, if you're working with larger models there may be an impact on performance, so just be aware with that. So now it's not only the first view that you create but any other view that you create uh, is given a preview and that works with the likes of principal view as well. So again incredibly helpful here is that ability to get the isometric view the right orientation the first time rather than leaving that cross box clicking and finding out it's not the orientation that you want and I'd be surprised if you've never done that before. It works as well uh, for say not just uh, the drawing view wizard and the principal view tool but uh, it's available for a number of the other drawing view creation tools as well so uh, section views for example we can place we can also add in say detailed views as well so I'm just holding down the alt key because I don't want to pick up any of the key points on this view so if I hold the alt key down and click I can place a drawing view without attaching it to a piece of geometry I want to do that because I just want to be able to move this around so you, again you can see it previewing and showing you where the detailed view is going to move to and actually well, we'll just do that last principal view I want an isometric view of this so I can see the orientation is right let's bung on some shading here as well and now that I've got that actually we'll just grab that view it would have been a good idea to change the scale really but scale value can now enter through uh, a ratio as well that you can rather than just typing a value in. So that's uh, that's a little bit on, on drawing view creation and the fact that you've got these previews available to you now. So in order to control that, so I mentioned say if you're wor uh, working with um, some slightly more complicated uh, drawing views uh, from larger assemblies then drawing view wizard here we go. In solid edge options this is where you can control whether or not you get that dynamic display so I can see what the view is going to look like before I place it if you don't want that so you can toggle these options off as well so at the moment large assemblies medium assemblies anything over 50 parts solid edge isn't going to show you a dynamic display um, you might want to up some of these values so actually it's maybe that, that should be a hundred um, and then um, yeah, larger assemblies yeah, over a thousand parts Click on OK, and so that's if you've made changes, then they are implemented in Solid Edge from that point onwards. If you need to change them, you just go back into Solid Edge Options. Uh, Retrieve Dimensions isn't new, but I wanted just to add in some dimensions to review as we go through this session. One or two of the tools from uh, ST6, to be fair. Then you've got this uh, Arrange Dimension tool. Select a drawing view that's got some dimensions on it already. They don't have to have been placed using Retrieve Dimension. But that just tidies these dimensions up and groups them together as well. So if I need to move these dimensions as a whole, um, as a group, then I can do that um, because I have maintain alignment set switched on. And again, that toggle that is pretty much on um, 
for you automatically. So if I do a retrieve dimension on this view as well, then you can do the same thing. Rather than using arranged dimensions, you can also drag dimensions around, and I can I can uh, kind of match um, I can match them up and, and, and arrange them and, and group them together manually uh, as well as uh, as automatically. Let's move on to uh, the second sheet here. So uh, we've got a, a drawing view with the um, this dash box again, something they introduced recently. Why is that displaying? Do I want it to be displayed as a toggle here? Show, hide, uh, annotation, shape. So if you find that, you, that that annotation shape's annoying, it just looks wrong, or you don't want to display it. It doesn't print out, but you can toggle the view of it on and off using that button there. Now in ST7, they've added in some nice tools uh, relating to the parts list. If I edit into a parts list, double click, it brings up the um, the sort of Excel spreadsheet style uh, edit capability, again, that they introduced it back in ST6. They've also now added an extra button or a little symbol in the top left hand um, corner of the parts list. If you right click on that, you can turn on a highlight, you can turn on a thumbnail, and that just means that A, I can select that component or element or sub assembly, whatever it is in the parts list and it shows me a thumbnail and you can also see it's highlighting those parts actually on the drawing view as well so I know I've got two instances of this but it's just easier to identify the component in the list if you've got the ability to switch on a highlight or a thumbnail or both properties just takes you into the properties of the parts list so those are a couple of nice nice uh, extra tools for um, for identifying components from a parts list. As far as identifying components go, they've also added in a capability for when you're running the drawing view wizard. If I wanted to add in some drawing views of a component that was in the assembly, or a sub-assembly for that matter, I've moved this window out of the way so I can see this drawing view. Because as I select components, again in ST6, it's like, okay, I can see the preview, but which is which one of those insta instances is that? Is that whereabouts is that component in this in this assembly? Especially useful to say if I if I'm not that familiar with the assembly, I didn't create most of this stuff. I'm just detailing some bits and pieces because the guy who generated it yeah, isn't in a position to do so. So you can generate drawing views, say of of, uh, of assemblies. If we drill down a little bit further, I can pick up individual part models as well. And again, you can see those highlighting. On the view, they're not very large components, those, but you can can, can see them highlighting. So, all right, that's the part that I was interested in, or this is the subassembly I was interested. Click on OK, and then it's just a standard drawing view creation. So they've added in that capability to see parts, and that's okay for for subassemblies. But I think one of the areas where it really helps is in frames, because in ST6, if you need to be able to create drawing views, <coughs> excuse me of individual frame members. Then you have to save the frame out as a single, as a, as a separate part file to do that. So if I run a drawing view wizard now, and again, just shift this select attachment box across. So in ST6, all I get is the frame element. I don't get these, I don't get the, the actual assembly structure. I can pretty much just create a drawing view of, of what the frame cross section looks like. So although the preview here, shows the cross section you can see on the drawing view the uh, the relevant elements are highlighting so it has kind of separated out each of these each of these parts and allows me to go ahead and create a drawing view of those of individual frame members so i can click on okay all right i don't want an iso view so we want um let's have a look at creating a right view yeah that's grand that's uh, that's what i want and then i can just throw on some quick dimensions so i can very quickly detail up these individual frame members and we'll bung in an angle here as well a couple of those uh, lines and then a on the keyboard with a smart dimension so creating the the individual piece part drawings from a from a skid is that much easier now in st7 now that i've got the ability say to save out individual uh, frame members Uh, just going back to uh, our original part drawing here as well, something else they've added in is this is an ability to create referenceable um, text, I guess, and that really works quite nicely with um, datums and geometric tolerance links. So if I go ahead and add in 
a datum frame on the top of this model, uh, which is going to go in on that top line. That's fine. Then if I create a some geometric tolerancing and we go in here and we'll go in and it needs to be as parallel spacer and the maximum condition and a reference actually hits this option here reference text is the is the new option and I can go ahead and pick up uh, the datum uh, value so we can double click or you can use copy click on OK and then we can put in the actual tolerance and I don't know, 0 0.25 mil or something like that OK and again we can then place that element that feature control frame on the model so that if I then end, as end up deciding to change the reference you can see it's automatically updated it in the feature control frame so some referenceable text typically where you've got an input box where you can type in a value a, a letter or a string then you can use that as a reference for some other element some other piece of annotation on the drawing the, uh, the last little thing to have a look at here in draft is, uh, is some changes they've made to the way that the uh, coordinate dimension tool works. And you may find that some of this stuff, that these coordinate dimensions work, uh, that these enhancements are being pushed across into some of the sketching tools as well. So there's an automatic tool which we'll cover in a second. Uh, all coordinate dimensions also seen a little bit of a, a, a change in, in uh, or an overhaul in functionality. So I can, it still kicks off the same way. So I can start with my sort of zero point or origin point. If I then subsequently select any elements, then you can see that it's creating a dimension for me. So now in ST6, what you do is you select the element that you want to create a dimension for and move the mouse down and it would snap it to the same level or, or, or line up all of the dimensions. But you had to do that manually, whereas in, ST, uh, in ST7, uh, I don't have to do that manually. You can also see that it puts in jogs for you as well automatically. And again, it doesn't do that in ST6. Right? You have to use the Alt key to insert individual jogs into these dimension lines. These dimensions are all placed as a group as well, so you can move them around and uh, you can select any of these dimensions as lines and move them all about. So some nice changes to the coordinate dimension when you're creating them manually. I just want to pick up that more dimension and delete it so that I'll get rid of the, uh, the, the entire coordinate dimension. So they, let's have a look at the, the automatic coordinate dimension tool as well now. So I want to create some dimensions to the centers of the holes in this drawing view that we can see. So two-step process, select a drawing view and then select the geometry um, that we're going to use to do that. Now step one is okay just click on the drawing view, any element on there and you can see the whole thing highlights in um, in red and then once selected it's uh, it's highlighting magenta and then I can right mouse button or accept and then I can click on an origin element. Okay so I guess um, it would be worth just running this again because what I wanted to do actually was just have a quick look at this key point option. So when you're coming on to select geometry effectively it's using whatever you've got set in this options page here as well. So circle centers, I'm interested in creating a coordinate dimension to all the centers of the circles. If I turn a load of these other things on, it's gonna create lots and lots of dimensions, which is not really what I want. So go through this options page, filter it out, and from that point onwards on ledges, at this, if I use this automatic coordinate dimension tool, it's gonna to pick up on uh, just circle centers from this point onwards. I'll have to go back into that options page and change that if I want to do change the references, or change the elements I'm dimensioning to at some future date. So here's the view, accept, let's pick up on our origin, so the prompt bar, common origin element, I'm going to use the, uh, the centre of the, the centre hole, and again you can see, again a slight change to functionality, jogs are being added automatically, negative dimensions are also uh, supported now as well. So drawing view, right click to accept, origin point, Again, we can click and place, and it adds in all of the dimensions to each of the holes uh, on that drawing view. So again, significantly quicker to do um, than it was uh, in SD6, or pre-SD7, I should say. So again, some, uh, th there's another element that we could actually have a quick look at. Maybe I just want some of the, um, I need a couple of dimensions to be added. Uh, to this uh, to this detailed view so again automatic dim coordinate dimensioning I'm going to end up picking that view and what I want to be able to do is pick up on um, gee, sorry 
just want to be able to use coordinate dimension here. So I'm going to I'm going to relate it back to perhaps to our original one. And the element that I want to dimension to is is this uh, line here. Actually, we could just pick up this cutout. And actually, what I really want to be able to do is maybe just it's not adding that dimension. That isn't the one that we want. But I do if we go in and grab coordinate dimension origin elements there. If I hold the Alt key down, I can click and place a dimension uh, to that cut that's in that detail view. And you can see if uh, holding the Alt key down is really the key bit here. It doesn't line up the dimension with the original one, which is uh, what happened when I did this first time round. So just wanted to show you what happens there, and then again we can snap the snap the um, even with the Alt key down, snap the dimension down to the level. So that's a that sort of positioning of the dimension works a little bit more like ST6, but at least now I've still got dimensions to the to the origin that coordinate system, uh, but uh, the dimension lines have been cropped. So those are the key areas and, and some of the uh, key uh, changes really uh, through uh, what they've delivered there in Solid Edge D7 in the draft environment. So some new tools, nice new coordinate dimension commands, the dynamic preview expansion on what they've really added in ST6, which is which is welcome. That's it's just reducing the amount of um, guesswork, certainly when it comes to creating views of things like uh, you know 3D views, isometric views, really like those. And some nice enhancements, not only to the coordinate system tool, but uh, the uh, the parts list and some of the little previews, thumbnails, and the ability to create drawing views off frames. All really useful tools. So, I hope you found this session of use. Uh, if you have any feedback or any uh, sessions you'd like to see in the future, please feel free to drop us a line. The contact details uh, are on the bottom of the uh, slide there. Thank you for your attention. I hope you